Our next guest, do we have some Hellfire Club members in the crowd? Yeah. Amazing. Do we have some Stranger Things fans in the crowd? Yeah. All right, then let's not waste any more time. Please give your spookiest welcome to Vecna himself, Jamie Campbell. -Dow. Hello everyone. This is amazing. I love you too. There's a sign in the crowd that says Vecna tie me up. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll go for dinner first. Uh, I was wondering if you might be able to say in your best Vecna voice, hello fan expo. Oh no, I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous. Come on, let's let's hype them up, hype them up a little bit. Maybe, maybe when I've warmed up a bit. Hello, though, everyone. Hi. Okay, lovely. I love that. We'll work up to it. Um, I mean, I'm curious to know how how much did you know about the arc of your character when you booked the role? Like, were you shocked when you read this? I love my job, and I'm a fucking nerd. So, <laughs> we have some of those here. Uh, yeah. I like took with me like this like this booklet that I'd made of of like all these other characters that I thought were you know helpful inspiration. I took pictures of the upside down. I even took a picture of the mind flare and I and I and I presented that to them and I was like, hey guys, like is this right? Because they hadn't shown me the script or anything, mm. and they were like, this is perfect. And then once they started flicking through the pages, they were like, all right, well let me. Let us tell you a little bit more about what happens, you know. He was a real person, he's going to be number one. But that was about it, you know. I, I wasn't run through the full arc, so I was discovering it as scripts were sent through that whole year, which was just wild, like, it was amazing. I mean, how shocking was that when the reveal came out to you? It was, it was, it was a dream come true. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I was so stoked, I was just like, this is, I get to do this, like, this is the coolest thing in the whole world for me, and, and I think also given the fact that I'd spent so much time kind of doing this prep work, um, it sort of confirmed in my mind all of the things that I thought that I knew, and I was like, thank God I'm not completely insane, like, I managed to get it right just a little bit, so yeah. it was very cool. And they tie it all together so well, it's so impressive. Like, the writing in the season was incredible. Well, exactly, and, and you know, it's amazing to come here and meet so many amazing people and, 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 you know, and to hear the impact that this show has on you, and that's phenomenal. Um, and when people come up to me on the street, you know, they're so lovely and, like, you know, well done, and, and I say to them, it's like, it could have been anyone, and for me, like, the writing is exactly the thing that makes the show. Without Matt and Ross, the show is nothing. So we're just there to serve the vision of these two creative geniuses. And it's that's how I feel about it too. It's it's all them. So any praise that we get, I'm just like, save it for Matt and Ross, because it's nothing to do with me. I mean, I appreciate that you are very humble about it, and I think that's very sweet, but I think that anybody else as Vecna would maybe not have, have brought what you brought to it. So I think you did an amazing job. Yeah! what the difference was in your process between preparing to play one on a day on set versus preparing to play Vecna, I mean, besides eight hours of makeup, obviously, but mentally. <laughs> so, I mean, the process for Vecna was, was quite intense. Um, I would spend time, like, doing a lot of dark meditation work, using a lot of, like, low-frequency sound, um, oh. you know, staring at pictures of, like, Millie's eyes, or <laughs> like Sadie's eyes, like I got a book and I like took a picture of Sadie and crossed out her eyes with this red pen yeah. and yes. wrote like, kill them all, kill them all, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> um, and, and so I would kind of put myself in that zone and then with one, you know, I always knew that there was this like deep resentment and this pain that was going on underneath him and particularly with his relationship with Brenna, 
And yeah. it was one of the things that came up as I was preparing for it, is I would find myself in the middle of the night almost crying, saying, Papa, please, Papa, please, Papa, please, no. And that, I, I know, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that was something that would, would come up, and I felt like what he's having to do is, is mask this fire that he has inside of him with this exterior sort of politeness in order to survive his world, almost. Um, so I would make sure that that fire was was inside of me, um, and that then I would just try and make sure that I was polite and, and nice externally. However, when you know the change happens, or when we get to see him be his real self, yeah, you know, there was more of that Vecna work, more of the sort of kill them all. You know, they've taken everything from me. They bully. You know, Henry's bullied. You know, basically, and he's, yeah. he's your archetypal character who gets bullied into a place so much that he ultimately ends up seeking revenge in a very um, destructive way. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're terrifying as Vecna. Like, I'll, I'll say that for sure. Where, was anybody, I mean, you're working with a lot of kids. Like, were any of them on set freaked out by you when you were in full costume? I'm sure most people here who are fans of the show have read, yes, Millie Bobby Brown, lovely Millie. Um, who I became very, uh, yes, Al indeed, uh, <laughs> who I became very close with, burst into tears. And, and she has said recently that she thought she was going to walk onto set and like Vecna wasn't going to be there. It was just going to be somebody in a green screen, green screen suit. Ah. How she thought that four months into working the film, <laughs> I, the project, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, Millie cried a lot. Um, you know, a lot of the crew working on the set, I'd like walk, you know, walk down like a dark hallway and they'd see me and they'd like, like jump and scream. Oh that, that was always quite satisfying in a strange way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we love that. Um, so yeah, there was, there was some pretty intense reactions. I mean, I, I would not really kind of, when I, when I walked onto set, you know, at the beginning of the day, I'd make sure that my focus and my attention was very much put on the other actor, you know, whether it be Millie or Sadie predominantly. Um, and so I think a few people just saw me like staring just like directly at them for like a good four hours and were very <laughs> concerned. Yeah, um, sure. But towards the end, like I would talk to, there was a great guy called Tyler who's worked on the show for a few years now. Um, and he was kind of making sure that Vecna was kept under wraps. Um, but I started talking to Tyler about all the Vecna trauma in the Vecna voice. I became so comfortable with him. I feel like it all started with my dad. And like, <laughs> that was really fun, so yeah. Picturing you on like a velvet couch, like, It's you know. that picture, it's a, there's a picture of me sat on the bleachers looking at a tape with an iPad in my hand, but I was actually lying on the bleacher talking to him about all this like family <laughs> trauma for like a good hour. Yeah, it was great fun. That's a good picture. I, we are going to get to some audience questions in just a bit here. So if you guys do have a question, please go ahead. We do that. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about music because you're also a musician. Uh, first question, probably an easy question, but what's your... No, no, my, my sort of logical, smart answer. Um, no. <laughs> Not the Venga Boys. No. I love Joseph, but no. Um, <laughs> singer. I feel like we should see a musical episode of Stranger Things. I think we should do a touring show. Yeah, now we're talking. Yeah. I feel that. You too. That's a great, that's a great idea, actually. Play some Metallica, play some Sick. Keyboard covers. Sick. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about your your music. You've released several singles this year. Uh, are you guys fans? I think you probably have fans. Uh, and then based on a sort of take on Dante's Inferno, which I think is really interesting. I'd love if you could talk a little bit about your, your singles. Yeah, yeah I am. so I, I, I sort of discovered this journey of like Dante's Inferno as I was prepping for Stranger Things. It all sort of happened at the same time. It was very strange. And I started by making this kind of music like that sounded like uh, pornography by The Cure, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which I just, which is an incredible album. Woo! And and as I was diving into that, I got to I got to hell. So I got to the, like the bottom, the darkness, and I was like, "Fuck! How do you describe nothing?" 
Like, yeah. how do you describe an endless space of nothingness? You know, that line is great, but what's after? <laughs> like, what, yeah. else is, what else is out there? So I kind of put it to one side for a minute and then picked up my guitar and started writing more like blues rock again. And all of a sudden, all the questions I'd been asking myself in my mind started to get answered just as I was, you know, instinctually working on this music. Um, and so, you know, released Paralyzed and Start the Fire, which I called the prologue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, started, came up with those two and then did a cover of Johnny Cash. Well, it's not Johnny Cash's song, but it was made famous by Johnny Cash and Odetta. Um, run on and then yeah so good and then um, I am so the visuals are sort of telling the story of this descent into hell so we're now in purgatory so the next song will be you know gate one of well gates of hell and into the first circle of hell well you know where we'll encounter certain people and, and types of people and creatures and then you know as we explore this space I think we'll find out who we really are or who I really am and, and that's really exciting creatively it's just very very fulfilling um, and you know I, I, I love the idea of darkness and I love the idea of the underworld and I love the idea of worlds beyond worlds and witchcraft and you know I, I think that we all have like Eleven we all have powers it's just how we how and when we choose to tap into them I love that. I love that. And you call yourself the witch king too, so. They're two separate things, witch and king, you know. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> I'm not the king of all witches, you know. <laughs> so I've never put myself in that space, but they're two, you know, two opposing ideas, I suppose. Yeah. It's really cool. I love that. Thanks. Let's get to some audience questions. Hi. Hello. These are typically skipped over, but thank you for coming. Um, and I guess. Yes, I <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I guess more so my question, you know, I'm an author and I find myself sometimes sympathizing with my own villain. Um, and I was wondering if there was any part of you while playing Vecna sympathized with some of the things that he thought of, whether it be the endless routine of just day-to-day -day life and things like that, or if there's anything you almost kind of agreed with? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hope. Thank you Hi. so much. Hi. Yeah, no, all of it. I mean, you know, you as a writer, me as an actor, you know, we have to, and I have to fall in love with the character that I'm playing. I can't judge them and hate them. I have to really understand where they're coming from in order to play them from a place of truth, right? Um, thankfully, the way Matt and Ross write is always from a place of truth. I mean, just, the, just that little interaction between Mike and Elle in episode nine, just like, like made me cry, it was amazing. Um, so I, I did end up sympathizing with him. I mean, I think, you know, this is a character and a person who has his own belief system that the world is a very savage and brutal place and everything that he encounters only confirms that. Whether it's confirmation bias or not is not really for me to kind of think about. It's like that's actually his experience. Brenner manipulated him, mistreated him, and forced him to become a lesser version of himself and not, you know, not his, not live his truth, basically. And with that, I was like, no, I, I love that and I respect that and I understand that. Um, you know, also the fact that he says, you know, people present a version of themselves. I mean, fuck. <laughs> like, you know, I think we get to see that a lot, right? And his family, his, his mother and his father, his father comes back from war and, you know, he's trying to be this super nice, you know, member of society, when in fact he's murdered civilians, and that's casual Tuesday. You know. Sorry, casual Tuesday. Casualties. <laughs> well, Vecna has casualties, <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, I, and I think for him, all the things that he believes are true to him. So yes, I did sympathise with him because I understand what that feels like. I work in film. <laughs> <laughs> 
I live in Los Angeles. <laughs> it's not often I get to see a lot of real people. <laughs> thank you, Ben, and I've been a fan since Shadow Hunter, so this was insane. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Hi, Jamie. Hello. I love you so much. Thank you. My question is, all I want is a hug from you. All you want is a hug from me. Yes. Come on then. That was very cute. I will have to request all other hug requests for you. Hello. I love you so much. Thank you. My question is, all I want is a hug from you. All you want is a hug from me. Yeah. Come on then. Oh, wow. Holy hell. Iconic character, really? Um, no, yeah, that's no. Was Robert's here. I couldn't possibly play <laughs> Freddy. I mean, as as you may have read, I, I am a huge fan of, of of both Robert, but also Doug Bradley as well as Pinhead. Um, yes, please, absolutely. Um, so you know, if you know, we sorry. <laughs> Voldemort. Ray Fiennes is scary. I'm going to leave Ray for long. Um, um, yes, maybe if I could turn back the hands of time, maybe transform into Doug Bradley himself and, and play, um, play, play, uh, play Pinhead, then, then maybe. But me, myself, and I, I just feel grateful for that. Fair enough. Cool. Thank you. Hello, Robin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie. <laughs> Good luck. Jamie. Oh, 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 Jamie. Oh,